I think I have a drinking problem. This is my fifth, no, no, sixth glass of water. Nowadays, there is a trend of measuring the hydration level and I follow that trend too. I used to keep a water bottle by my side all the time. But as the time went by, it became a burden. I just could not keep up with it. Although deep down, I felt obliged to persist on drinking six to eight glasses every single day due to the immense benefit that we hear on the internet, like all it takes for you to have clear and healthy skin, to get a slim body and to get rid of all the toxins is just water. Who doesn't fall for that line? I did and I followed. But one day I thought, doesn't that sound too good to be true? So after the countless research, I found out, actually, it is too good to be true. As for research, water is not responsible for making your skin soft and clear, but it's food enriched with vitamin A. A healthy diet can help you get rid of toxins, but not just water. I'm sorry, but I have to break it out to you that when you eat junk food with, to compensate and try to compensate with lots of water, it does not help. What about getting rid of fat then? Well, when you drink glugs of water, there is no room for food. So it helps in reducing calories, but does not reduce the excess fat. I pondered, where did this exact six to eight number come from then? Buckle up, there's a history behind it. In 1974, Frederick and Margaret wrote a book named Nutrition for Good Health, where it mentioned that an average adult should consume six to eight glasses, and that includes beverages and water from food intakes too. However, only six to eight glasses have been taken into consideration by everyone. As highlighted in the Medicine of uh, Institute of Medicine panel on dietary reference, intakes for electrolytes and water, there is no single daily water intake requirement. That seems valid too, right? Because it is hard to recommend the exact amount of water because it depends on various factors such as age, diet, climate, season, activity level, lifestyle, and many more. I would like to go over them one by one. Firstly, your age. Different age groups have different water requirements. When we were children, we used to play and run a lot. And in order to maintain that energy level, we need more water. In that stage, we, our body is growing, so water helps in that progress. But as we turn into adults, we might not require as much water unless, and that is the second point, that is activity level. A footballer would definitely need more water than an office worker. You yourself might experience that you drink more water when you get engaged in some playing, dancing, swimming, and many more. Activity level determines your water intake and so does climate and seasons. If you, are in a, if you live in a hot climate, you tend to sweat a lot. And in order to be chill and regulate the body temperature, you need more water than in colder climates. Lastly, the third point, which are two are both interrelated, and that is diet and lifestyle. I have been trying to maintain the healthy lifestyle by doing daily yoga and consuming healthy foods, which are enriched with water content. After imbibing the knowledge from all the research that I mentioned above, I now don't have to rely only on that tasteless water, but I could feel hydrated and feel fresh by having juicy watermelon, kiwi, cucumber, and many more. So what I pondered one day, like uh, I know that if it's not exact six to eight glasses, then how much should we drink? Thankfully, our body has a way of telling it. All the answers are within us. We just need to find it. It's thirst. Sounds like a no brainer, right? But it's so simple. When you are thirsty, simply drink water. Just think about it. 
You don't go to toilet for no reason, do you? And you don't eat unless you are hungry, do you? So why don't we use the same technique for water? In some part of the world or some people of the world says that if you're already already thirsty, you are dehydrated. But that's simply not the case. It's like saying, if you're sleepy, you have a sleeping disorder. How absurd is that? Moreover, there is actually a term named hyponatremia, where people drinking excess amount of water are more dehydrated. Yes, you heard it right. Due to the flushing out of all the electrolytes from your body. And that leads to swelling of brain and liver. You definitely don't want this throughout your life, do you? This simple mistake of drinking excess amount of water can even cost you your life. With all this um, in, uh, overcomes, we tend to overdo at times, but we need to be mindful and just think before we drink. All in all, most healthy people can adequately meet their health, uh, water requirement by simply using thirst as a guide. We all humans, uh, we know, nobody knows your body more than you do. So with all this I have said, now you must be considering about the underlooked and the overlooked facts about drinking water. You now need to be mindful about the intakes of water that you do throughout your life. This is how it helps. And this sort of habit can add value to your healthy life. Thank you and over to you, Toastmaster of the morning. Many of us are intrigued by the sound of silence, right? Why? Because everything that goes around us seems like a chaos wanting calm. And Toastmaster Sanjana, the purpose of your project, making us clear on how not just the silence, but effective vocal variety in which what you speak can make one appreciate what we listen as well. You were benevolent in terms of making us understand how overrated consumption of water is. And we, using our common sense, should analyze that as food, so is the water, a necessity. The mumbling you did at the beginning with projection of glass in your hand was able to grab the audience's attention. The vibrant, dynamic, and energetic you comfortably share what you had for your audience. The pitch, sometimes higher and sometimes lower, was indeed a great goal for breaking that monotony of your speech flow. I acknowledged how benevolent you were also in terms of expressing emotions with genial and fluent articulation of your speech. As we quite know, the ample opportunity Toastmaster holds for us to enrich what we just presented then and there. Few things I acknowledged to look into your speech that could have made the perfect capturing of the moment between what you want to say, what the audience would grab to the point. Some background noise at the beginning made quite an impact of distraction. If you could have eradicated that, it would have made the attention better for us to withhold from the starting of the speech to the end. Similarly, with the hassle of vocal variety maybe, the hand just so we're rushing, as well as with the change of the tone you were doing. It was over here, over here all the time. So it was quite a bit of division of attention there as well. Similarly, the mumbling at the start, as well as a bit of touch of emotional impact of too much water making the health worse was such a perfect formulation. However, the pronunciation sometime went to and fro, thirsty, and as you have to say thirsty, you said thirsty. How the sleep and the make of difference can have the understanding that, that is very varied in terms of making the audience feel. I think you got that right. For that, effective pauses would have made it easier for you to catch the breath and go with ease throughout your speech. In the not cell, you impactfully completed the purpose of your speech with excellence and hard work, I must say. Clear articulation, comfortable, and dynamic energy of yours were the keys to successful presentation. 
Further, you can use the feedback for your future speeches to come. Congratulations, Toastmaster Sanjana, and over to you, General Evaluator, Toastmaster Sanjana.